Hello and welcome to the Synergia People Podcast 2023. My name is Jacob Amon. I grew up in Seattle, Washington. I was raised to be very much of an outdoors person. My parents took us into the mountains a lot. They were big fans of Rachel Carson, the writer of Silent Spring. We were kind of indoctrinated in being in the outdoors. That was kind of our church. Yeah. What kind of education do you have, Jacob? I was in high school public school in Washington State, east of Seattle. And right after 9-11, I had been starting meditation and spiritual practice and studying uh, mysticism and religion. After 9-11 happened, I was in advanced U.S. history, and I was simultaneously reading the people's history of the United States. And I realized that I was being taught things that were not very accurate in terms of the genocide that happened to native peoples here in America and uh, slavery and there's a lot that was glossed over. So I, I was really disturbed by that. And around that time, because I was so focused on spiritual practice and developing myself, I you know, made a compromise with my parents to do independent study and graduate high school independently and work on organic farms. So I started at 16 working on organic farms And that proved to be a very, I think, great decision because I got embedded into a community of people who were very focused on restoring the land, being a people of place, which is a kind of concept that you'll hear about more out here. There were, you know, maybe 10 organic farms in that area when I started out there. And now I don't know how many there are. There's a lot. There's, I don't know, a hundred. I mean, there's tons. Mm. It's really grown. And uh, the first farm I worked on was called Jubilee Farm, which was started by a Norwegian fisherman who sold his boat and fishing license for a hefty uh, sum and bought really nice land out in this valley and started this farm there with a lot of, uh, and he, he got really into Rudolf Steiner. So it was didn't start out as a biodynamic farm, but it became biodynamic over the years that I was there. So I would attend philosophy lectures. There was philosophy constantly talked about while we were out in the fields. Right. And um, it was it was a special, special place. And I, I was there on and off from 2001 through 2006. I experimented with another farm down the road that was smaller um, for a short stay and then came back to that larger community-supported agriculture farm. Mm -hmm. What brought you here to Synergia? Uh -huh. How did you hear about this place? I heard about Synergia probably before I moved to Santa Fe in 2016. Ralph Abraham, mathematician, one of the founders of Chaos Theory. And Ralph was a part of uh, the conferences that the Ecotechnics ran back in the early 1980s. So he was tapped by John Allen and others to participate in these conferences where they had all these big heads, um, Sir Gillian Prance and all these, mm -hmm. uh, these big thinkers that came to these conferences that, that, that led up to Biosphere 2. So Ralph Abraham told me about Synergia Ranch and recommended that I um, get in touch with them and, and get to know them because he thought we had affinity based on my background with organic uh, farming and, and Steiner and, and um, my ecological background. When I was in Santa Cruz, California, I worked in environmental engineering and hydrogeology for about five years. So that working at that firm, um, working on environmental remediation, really demonstrated the amount of careless activity that was done in Department of Defense research and development and manufacturing it was kind of mind-boggling to actually grok the scope of that. I mean, people would just dig infiltration wells and pits and dump all sorts of chlorinated solvents and metals and wastes into all these. In it the would soil. percolate into the groundwater that these very people and their children were drinking. So this was an eye-opener for you. It was a big eye-opener. You were saying you have heard about them, you know about Biosphere 2, 
knowing and hearing about a project or a place is something different than being there and working. You've been here now for how many years? Well, I started working with Synergy Ranch and the Institute of Ecotechnics and their various projects in 2018. So we've been mostly kind of helping with the technosphere, as they call it, aspect of the ranch's operations and the institute and all that. You know, getting to know them for a number of years, becoming really fascinated with all the projects. I've read a lot of, you know, of their books and kind of really dug deep into the history. I was just, I was kind of just blown away at how much this group of people were able to achieve in the course of their lives through synergy and through mm -hmm. establishing, you know, practices of synergy. And that just really fascinated me. And that's a big reason why I came out here, not just because I enjoy the people and, and the place, but I really wanted to keep learning, but also become a part of the next generation that will hopefully carry all this into the future. What are you currently doing here? Coming out here, um, they, you know, they have an orchard here that was established in 1974 and five. And they have a small market garden that has been, has existed at different times when they've inhabited this place more than others throughout the decades. But in recent years, Starlight Augustine, she was managing the market garden orchard here. She chose to take a research position in Lisbon, Portugal. And so this opportunity came up to come out and help work on the garden. That's something that I, um, you know, care about deeply, you know, having a relationship with plants and gardening. I got into permaculture in the mid to late 2000s and have taken several permaculture design courses and a per permaculture teacher training and been a part of some permaculture education organizations in the past. I would say an inspiring permaculture designer. I'm not, I have taught some, I haven't taught actual permaculture design courses, but I um, one of the reasons why I moved out here is because it is a retreat center where right. workshops and retreats and education happens. And that's one of the things that over time, as I get settled here, I would like to, to help facilitate. Such courses. Yes, yes. How to find a property that you can really work with and really understand the land use history, the deep land use history. Yes, levels of contamination, how you can address that, but also how you can heal the land right and and that's something out here that i've really have, have appreciated and that they have done is that they took you know a very arid <laughs> landscape that had no trees and anything and they've really established a wildlife sanctuary here with tons of birds and 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 um flora and fauna that make this a home if you would look at synergy at uh, these people who are here and when you look at them when you see what they do how would you define the binding factor between you and them they're kind of like on a parallel or similar track to the evolution of permaculture it, it, you know it's a set of principles and ethos that tries to help people establish regenerative uh, more permanent lasting community function and systems. So, and you can buy into this. Yes. Yeah, exactly. There, there was just all sorts of, uh, common ground. I think what they've done here, which is kind of unique through their group process over the years, they developed a really interesting way of exploring group dynamics, human social dynamics and archetypes through theater, through work process and trying to balance out work life. They had this 444 system where they did four hours of work, four hours of community chores, four hours was theater, art, expression. As a person growing up in the United States, that sounded really cool because, you know, Europeans and some other folks have gotten into a better balance with maybe a little bit more socialistic governance structures. So I was really attracted to just the whole structure. And, you know, it's evolved over the years here and a lot of the elders are aging and, and who knows where it will go in the future, but that's kind of, 
I'm really part of the mystery and the curiosity is where is it going to go in the future and how will it tie into how societies change with technology and, and culture. What are the five values which are important for you, which you see here as well? My values come from the sense of place, caring for place. I haven't traveled much in my life. I was really into Wendell Berry when I was younger, the American writer and, and, and farmer who's written a lot about the importance of establishing a sense of place and community history, passing down knowledge. And I was, you know, when I was younger, I just wanted to stay in the same place my whole life. And that was, I didn't want to travel. And I was really kind of a little stubborn about that. And I still haven't yeah. traveled much because I did do a lot of farming. And then, yeah. but yeah, the, the values, you know, care of people, care of the earth and ecology and other species, that ethos, um, fair share. These folks here have really, I would say, lived pretty humbly relative to the accomplishments that they you know, created. And I think in their minds, their investments are in the land, the community connections, having global connections across the world um, with all these different projects in, you know, Puerto Rico, the Rainforest Project in South America, projects they did down there, um, you know, the Western Australia Project. um, That was their investment, really. And, And their wealth is in their human connections. So when I look at what I have access to here as a young person coming in, It's that is like the real gold is the human connections with all of these amazing people around the world and the history and the knowledge and lineage, the call to help be a part of stewarding that and carrying it on, documenting it, archiving all of that. That's something I've also been a part of because it's a huge, you know, critical mission to actually Mm -hmm. preserve that, that information. You're here now. Almost five years or five years? In Santa Fe, yeah. Yeah. So what are your major learnings so far? Personally, for me, theater, I never really appreciate it as a way, and it sounds stupid in a way or, or kind of funny, but I just never really grokked that theater was a powerful tool for exploring human dynamics and stepping out of your shoes. I mean, I, it, it just seems so basic to me now, but I never really appreciated it until I saw the way that they were using it to really step out of your comfort zone, get familiar with people, get into a place where you could explore all these different times in history and, and, and types of human expression and cultural expression. Honestly, for me, that's probably been one of the biggest things because it, I, it really helps me be more kind of just outwardly expressive and playful with people. Also, I feel like I've learned a lot more about architecture and how it integrates into design. So yeah, that that's a huge, I would say those are probably big two things. Two. I yeah. mean, it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot right there. I don't know how much more I can really... And it's quite interesting because you seem rather more a very rational person that you really dig into these creative things which have been offered here. So maybe it's the contradiction (laughs) which, which makes it kind of interesting, yeah. What are your plans here? What do you want to achieve while you're here? Well, it's kind of an exploration because... Honestly, it's taken quite a bit of time over these years to just wrap my head around all the things that they have done and understand what is going to be continued and what are the projects and that are now more important than others in the past, maybe, you know. I mean, I think the Heraclitus ship is very enticing to me. I grew up, I've always lived by the ocean until I moved to the high desert here. I've always lived by water. I'm, um, I've never really traveled on the water that much i haven't explored the ocean so that's something very much that i am enticed by and getting involved with christine um you know the rainforest project in puerto rico i'm wanting to go visit that in december i'm hoping i just kind of want to get my fingers you know be of service to the degree that i can on helping continue these projects 
because that's ultimately what these things need is they need young people to come in that have, you know, just this energy to help take it into the future. I always want to be trying to inspire young people to get off their phones and computers and all that and really get outside and just get their hands in the ground and, and, and. So how do you think one can replicate such models? Because it's obviously, it does good to the earth. Yeah. It does good to the people. Yeah. You know, it does good to the entire environment. So what can we do, you know, to replicate such models? Well, um, Synergetic Press, the publishing company here, which I've worked with you know, uh, since 2018, I think publishing is a huge component, um, you know, and that's evolved a lot. You have ebooks now, you have audio books, you have interactive Material, but this doesn't bring people who are not interested in being interested. Not necessarily, no. Um, I think that is happening. You know, we have like the Academia Biosferica in Brazil and Argentina. Those folks were here in April, and they're they're doing an educational platform, outreach platform um, for South America, and that's really inspiring, promising. That is kind of a type of replication that's happening of the whole ethos yes. and everything that's here. At the Las Casas de la Selva project in Puerto Rico, she has tons of these kids coming through there all the time. So that's a huge, just multiplier. It's these kids go there and they are just turned on by it. And some of them, you know, maybe they end up going to tech or whatever. Or, you know, they want to make money or they they have aptitude for this and that programming, and that's all fine. But the seed is planted, and 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 then there is that opportunity. And I think. So that's all, that's something that we are working on and we do here. And that's something I want to be a part of for sure. It's the first time you're saying we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Earlier you yeah. always said they. Because I'm trying to be respectful and not appropriate all the work they've done because I've only been tangential to a lot of it. You know, I'm, I'm still learning, and but I've been becoming more a part of, you know, the actual functions of the community and and you know, attracting people here and all that through my networks. And yeah, so you thank you. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Last thing, Jacob. Yeah. Think about five words which for you describe your experience here. The quiet out here, taking in the wilderness. And, and it, it is literally one of the quietest, most peaceful places I've ever lived. The taking in of the enchantment here is kind of next level. So I'd say just being in a, in a place that is wild, that has been rewilded, that's really big. Being a part of a community that has longevity, that has people that have been in the place. There's very few of these communities and these communes that started up in the 60s that lasted. So obviously that was a huge attractor. Why did this last? Why did these people make this work? Why are they so stubbornly right. wanting to continue this, pass this on? And so that's another thing. Another thing would be the preservation of um, of the culture that is here. That's something that I really treasure. It's something that we're lacking in this country so much. One more thing. Yeah. This is what you trick at. On, on your own. You were saying uh, you were interested in why are they still going? Yeah. What did you find out? Why do you think they are still going? Well, they're very tenacious people. Um, they just have a spirit of and a work ethic that is, I wouldn't say unparalleled, but they just have a passion for um doing good work and 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 creation being creative being creative people and learning from from nature from culture and and taking that into novelty new novel expression and that is i think really what's driven them from what i can tell thanks a lot thank you so much
Thank you for listening and please stay tuned for the next episode of the Synergia People Podcast 2023.